Krishna, 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 Ahiman. Krishna, 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 Ahiman. Krishna, 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 Rajaman. Krishna, Krishna. Rama Raghava Rama Raghava Rama Raghava Rakshamam Rama Raghava Rama Raghava Rama Raghava Rakshamam Krishna Keshava Krishna Keshava Krishna Keshava Pahimam Krishna Keshava Krishna Keshava Krishna Keshava Pahimam Krishna Keshava Krishna Keshava Krishna Keshava Pahimam Krishna Keshava Krishna Keshava, Krishna Keshava, Krishna Keshava Pahimam. Krishna Keshava, Krishna Keshava, Krishna Keshava Pahimam. Krishna Krishna, Krishna Krishna. Krishna 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 He Krishna 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 He Krishna 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 He Krishna 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 He Krishna 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 He Krishna 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 He Krishna 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 He Krishna 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 Rakshamam Krishna 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 Rakshamam Krishna 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 Rakshamam Krishna
Krishna, 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 Pahimam. Krishna, 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 Pahimam. Krishna, 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 Pahimam. Rama 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 Krishna Keshava, Krishna Keshava, Krishna Keshava Pahima. Krishna Keshava, Krishna Keshava, Krishna Keshava Pahima. Krishna Keshava, Krishna Keshava. Krishna Keshava Pahima Krishna Keshava Krishna Keshava Krishna Keshava Pahima Krishna 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 He Krishna 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 Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama.
Timarandasya kyananjana shalakaya Chashuri damyena asmashri kurovena Shri Chaitanya panopishtam Sapitayena kutaray Svaya krupakatamayam Dadati svapadam tikam Amiryam Shri Guru Shri Upapatamalam Shri Udhavarishnaparam Sahasatamalam Dikam Dham Satshivam Sadvitam Savatutam Harjana Sahitam Krishna Chaitanya Devam Shri Radha Krishna Padam Sahagana Rasha Kam Vitam Stha Hey Krishna Karuna Sindhu Dina Bandhu Jagat Ade Gopesha Gopika Kanga Radha Kanta Namostude Rapta Kanchana Gaurangi Radhe Vindavaneshwari Vishabhanu Sude Deve Pranamami Hare Priye Vansha Karpa Darubya Cha Kripa Sindhu Vyeva Cha Patita Nam Pava Nebhyo Vaishnavibhyo Namo Namaha Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadara Shri Vasadi Gaurabhakta Vinda Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. So as we're coming up to Janmashtami, which will be in about another three weeks, we're spending some time to recount some of the pastimes of Lord Krishna. 因为 Krishna 在 m a s t a m i 就 Krishna 的显现日还有三个星期就到了，所以我们用了一段时间来回顾 Krishna 的消时光
So we were talking last week about Lord Krishna's dealing with uh, we were hearing about uh, the, 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 the nasty king who was ruling who was the, his, his daughters had been married to Kamsa but they've been killed by Krishna the, the, the husband Kamsa was killed by Lord Krishna so Jarasandha the father of the two girls was very angry 上周我们就讲到了，嗯，就一个特别邪恶的国王扎尔桑的，他的两个女儿就嫁给了康萨，后来就被嗯康萨被库什纳就杀了。So we talked about Jarasandha and how powerful he was, and how ultimately, with the help of Lord Krishna, Bima defeated Jarasandha. 就我们讲到了。虽然Jarasandha是特别强大有力量的,但是在Krishna的帮助下,Bhima就杀了Jarasandha。So Lord Krishna, in the course of his dealing with Jarasandha, Lord Krishna fought with him 17 times and defeated him. Krishna和Jarasandha就打了17仗。but on the 18th occasion, when Jarasandha came to fight again, this time another king also came. So considering the situation, Lord Krishna decided that he would transfer all the people in Mathura, he would move them all to a safe place, far away, and he moved them all to Dwarka. 考虑到这种情况呢,主Krishna就决定把Dwarka成了所有的居民,把Mathura成了所有的居民都搬到Dwarka。Dwarka is really far away, right on the coast, on the, on the west coast of India. Dwarka成了,离Mathura成非常遥远。就在印度的西海岸。马图尔是在印度的中部。So, <laughs> uh, Lord Krishna made his home there in Dwarka. And when you have a home, you should have a wife, right? If you have a home without a wife, what's the point of having a home? Mm. So, Lord Krishna didn't just settle for one wife, he had many wives. So, Krishna didn't just settle for one wife, he Because he's the Supreme Lord. So he enjoys everything to the extreme extent, to the ultimate level. So he doesn't just have one wife, he had many wives. And he married all of them. They were all his legal wives. There was no polygamy or there was no crime on his part. And he took perfect care of each of his wives. And they were all very happy and very satisfied to be with him. So, we want to talk about how Krishna got these wives, uh, his different wives came to him. And it, it is all transcendental lila, pastimes of the Lord. It's not of the material world.
So, Lord Krishna's first wife was the daughter of a king. Actually, all, most of his wives, they were all daughters of great kings. Prin princesses. So, it happened that this one girl named Rukmini, she was the daughter of a king called Bhishmaka. And this girl Rukmini, she was actually the goddess of fortune herself who had come into this world. And so she was actually meant to be the wife of Lord Krishna. Krishna的手机皇后呢,如果迷你是比什马卡国王的女儿,她实际上呢,是幸运女神,她来到这个世界,物世界呢,就是为了做Krishna的妻子。So, this young girl, her marriage was arranged for her by her elder brother. Mm. So the elder brother arranged her marriage to one of his friends who was one of the enemies of Lord Krishna. So the elder brother you have to understand that Lord Krishna was playing the part of a, a normal human being. He was behaving like a norm, an ordinary person. He was taking care of his mother and father and then sometimes also fighting with other people. So people, some people were, not everyone was, were devoted to Krishna because Krishna didn't show himself as the supreme to everyone. Other, or norm, other materialistic people, they see Krishna as an ordinary person. And they, can, they try to compete with Krishna. And when they see Krishna uh, succeed in something and acquire some uh, kingdom, and uh, then they, they want to compete with him. They want to challenge him. So it happened that this girl Rukmini, she was understood, everyone understood her to be just like the goddess of fortune herself. And they all thought she would make the perfect wife for Lord Krishna. But her brother was envious of Krishna. He, he hated Krishna. So he decided he would arrange his daughter's marriage, his sister's marriage rather, to one of his own friends. So his own friend was someone named Sishupala. And Sishupala was another one like, like the brother of Rukmini, he was also very envious of Krishna. So, so there was always competition between Krishna and Sishupala. And it happened that 
so she, when they arranged them they arranged the marriage for Rukmini then they brought all the other powerful kings who were also en enemies of Lord Krishna so when there were many kings like Jara Sanda and others, they all came to protect this uh, Sishupala so that he could marry this girl Rukmini. And they thought if Krishna comes here, we will be here to, to, to defend. We will make sure this marriage takes place without any interference of Krishna. So it happened that when the girl Rukmini heard that her marriage was being arranged to Sishupala, she was not very happy because she had heard about Krishna and she thought it would be nice to have a husband like Krishna. So Rukmini used her intelligence and she wrote a letter to Krishna. And in her letter she told Krishna how she was supposed to be married to this other man, but actually her desire was to marry Krishna. And she told Lord Krishna that if she could not get Krishna for her husband, then she was prepared to undergo austerities until the end of her life and for many lifetimes until she was able to achieve the position of being married to Krishna. So Rukmini wrote all of this in her letter and then she gave the letter to one of her very trustworthy brahmanas who were staying there. So Rukmini she told the Brahmana, you must go quickly and deliver this letter to Dwarka. Give it to the hands of Krishna. You have to understand in those days there was no mobile phone, there was no Wi-Fi. Sometimes in the in the in the past times of Krish, Lord Krishna, he would use parrots to send messages, especially in Vrindavan, between him and Srimati Radharani, they would have parrots who would deliver messages to one another. The male parrot is called Sutta, and the female parrots are called Sari. Hmm. So in Vrindavan, there are many parrots. And both Srimati Radharani and Lord Krishna 
would make use of the parrots to convey messages between each other. Krishna and Shrimati Radharani, they would use English However, at this particular place where Rukmini was living, they didn't have parrots, they didn't have all these parrots, so she had to take a brahmana and tell the brahmana to go to Dwarka, deliver the message. So the brahmana went by walking, of course, there was, well, maybe, no, he didn't have a chariot. How did he go? He must have walked there to get there. But he got anyway to Dwarka and he was able to meet to Lord Krishna. Now Lord Krishna has a very special relationship with Brahmanas. Right? There are two things which are very dear to Lord Krishna. One is Brahmanas and the other is cows. Lord Krishna spent the first 12 years of his uh, presence on this planet in the land of the cowherd people, living with the cows and taking care of the cows. So Lord Krishna really cares a lot for cows. They're very important to him. There are cows on higher planets also, and even in the spiritual world, there are cows. The cows on the higher planets, they're called Sorabi cows. And they can give abundant quality, abundant milk of the highest quality. And in the spiritual world, the cows are Kamadenu cows. They can fulfill all your desires. Lord Krishna was performing his childhood pastimes in Vrindavan. He was in the home of a Vaishya, a cowherd man named Nanda Maharaj. And he, this Nanda Maharaj had nine lakh cows, 900,000 cows. That was, that was just an average herd of cows, not a great big number of cows. In the past, you could tell a person's wealth by how many cows they had. And the, the people who had the most wealth, they would have a lot of cow dung at their homes. They used the cow dung to cook with. Cow dung is antiseptic. If, the, if you see the villages in India, they'll take the cow dung and they'll smear it on the ground, around the ground every morning. And this way it keeps away all the mosquitoes. One, there was an interesting incident took place 
one time in our temple in USA where they have some cows and they have quite a herd of, big herd of cows. So it happened that somehow some devotees got stung by some bees. Oh, so, one of the devotees who got stung by bees, he said, Oh, I'm going into the city, I'm going to see a doctor, I'll get an injection or something, because this is very painful, this bee sting is really a lot of trouble. I'm going to see a doctor and get some real medicine. So a devotee went off in the car, drove all the way to the city, went to see a doctor, got some injection, and got some medicine, and he suffered for a few several days. But other devotee said, no, no, I'm not going to go to the doctor. I'll just take some cow dung. I'll just put some cow dung on it. And he took some cow dung, he put cow dung onto the, where the, the bee sting was, and regularly put the cow dung, rub it with cow dung, and didn't suffer any effect. Very quickly got, became perfectly okay. So cow dung is, is, is very valuable medicine, it's, it's, it's antiseptic, it's very purifying. If you have a new building, or especially a temple, a new place, before you open it, you smear the whole place with cow dung. And it purifies the whole place. So Lord Krishna grew up in Vrindavan, which is a village of cowherd people. Even today, you go to Vrindavan, cows are everywhere. So Everyone has some cows there. And they all have cow dung as well. Hmm. So Lord Krishna likes the cows and he also likes Brahmanas. The Brahmana is supposed to be a symbol of the mode of goodness. Brahmana That they live a pure life and their only business in life is for spiritual practice. They, they're not materialistic people. Brahmana You have to understand that the title of Brahmana is not hereditary. It's not that you're born a Brahmana. Brahmana But unfortunately, with the influence of this age, that is what's happened today. You ask people, are you a Brahmana? Yeah, but our family is Brahmana. Mm. 
But they don't have any Brahminical qualities. But they don't have any Brahminical qualities. Bad things like meat eating, intoxication, gambling. But they will claim the title of Brahmana. So that is called that is Brahmana by birth. That is not actually a real Brahmana. So the, the real Brahmana must have the qualities of a Brahmana. So Lord Krishna established he 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 came to establish the principles of religion. And he did that by speaking Bhagavad Gita. And in the Bhagavad Gita, Lord Krishna describes the qualities of a Brahmana. He lists nine different qualities. In the Vedic culture, society is divided into four sections. There's the intellectual class who are the Brahmanas. Then there's the administrative class who are the Kshatriya. And then there's the business class who are the Vaishya. And then there's the working class, the Sudra. So society is meant to cooperate. These four different sections of society are meant to work together to help each other. It's not that one is better than the other. It's just they have a different, a different engagement, different work to do. So the Brahmanas, they are meant to sacrifice their work, their life in the service of the society to help people materially and spiritually. Brahmanas, we are meant to help people by giving them sometimes astrological information, telling them about oh, different planets and how they have some bad influence on them. When it comes to marriage, then they will consult Brahmanas to see if the chart of the man and the woman are compatible, if they can live together happily. And they can tell from the chart of the man and the woman if, if they will easily have children in the marriage or not. One of the girls here in Hong Kong, she was getting married to a, another man from, from mainland China and they had their charts checked by the Brahmana and he told them, oh, very good, you will easily have children. So 
And after the marriage, very quickly they had two children, very nice, healthy children. So it works. There's a lot, I mean, even today these things are accurate. Not a hundred percent, but a lot of accurate. It can help to help you to understand. So this in the, in the past times of Lord Chaitanya, there's the example how a Brahmana came to his home one time. So Lord Chaitanya asked the Brahmana, My dear Brahmana, please tell me who was I in my previous life? So the astrologer took the birth details and he made the chart and he looked at the chart and then he, he told Lord Chaitanya, he said, Oh, in your previous life you were the Supreme Bhagavan, you were the su Supreme Personality of Godhead. And Lord Chaitanya looked at him and smiled and said, No, no, my Brahman, in my last life I was a cowherd boy. And so Lord Chaitanya was referring that actually in previous life he was Krishna, he was a cowherd boy. So Brahmanas can give that some Brahmanas are expert in astrology, some others are more expert in medical advice. They will guide you about what to do to improve your health. And other Brahmanas will give spiritual knowledge. You do find some Brahmanas, they are simply concerned with performing karmakandi rituals, which are for material well-being, for material prosperity. And so that's also Brahmana, but the, uh, the other class of the Brahmana will be more concerned for the spiritual position rather than just the material. So Lord Krishna is very fond of Brahmanas and when this Brahmana who came from Rukmini came to visit Dwarka, Lord Krishna immediately received him and gave him great honor. Because Lord Krishna is setting an example for everyone. He wants to show the example for everyone how we should treat the Brahmanas. So Lord Krishna immediately welcomed the Brahmana into his house. Lord Krishna was in his palace and uh, he welcomed the Brahmana into his home. So And then he fed the Brahmana and then he gave the Brahmana some time to rest and then after that then he inquired from the Brahmana how he could serve him. And the Brahmana had his letter from Rukmini, but before Krishna heard the letter, 
Krishna first of all inquired from the Brahmana that, how are you my dear Brahmana? Are you satisfied in your religious duties? Brahmana他就 Lord Krishna was very concerned that the Brahmana should be satisfied. If we are not satisfied in our spiritual practice, that means we are still we are still contemplating material things. 如果我们在灵修的过程当中仍然感到内心不满足，这就说明呢，我们还在冥想着那些物质的事物。We may not be satisfied with our spiritual advancement, but we should be satisfied with our efforts to practice spiritual life.我们可能对自己的灵修进步程度感到仍然不满足。但是我们不满意，但是我们应该对我们在灵性方面取得嗯所做出的努力感到满意。We should be satisfied with whatever condition we find ourselves in life. 我们应该对自己所处的任何处境都应该感到满足。Some people may be wealthy, others may be poor. 有的人可能会富裕，有的人可能贫穷。Some people may be very successful in their material endeavors and other people may not. But as a Brahmana and someone in the mode of goodness, it's important for them to be satisfied in whatever condition they find themselves. 但是对于一个在善良属性当中的Brahma来说,无论他是怎样的处境,他都应该感到满足。We are all placed into different conditions as a result of our past deeds. 我们都由于我们过往的活动而被置于特定的处境之下。According to our past lives, we are put into some kind of situation which is either punishment or reward. Uh, so, whatever situation we're in, we should be we should be just be satisfied in that and take it as an opportunity to simply absorb ourselves in devotional service. 所以无论我们自己是处在什么样的境况当中，我们都应该嗯感到满足，专注于嗯灵性的呃专注于奉爱服务。We see nice examples in Lord Chaitanya's pastimes. Some of the devotees, how they were very, they were always satisfied in their condition. 在主彩蛋的小时光当中，我们就能找到这样的奉献者。他们对他们自己的处境，他们总是很满意。Just like Kolaveka Sridhar, who was set making his, maintaining his life by selling bananas. Kolaveka Sridhar, he靠卖香蕉而为生，他就是很满意。So Lord Chaitanya tested Sridhar. He said, he offered him. He said, he said, just tell me what you want. I can fulfill any of your desires. Lord Chaitanya was revealing his divine position. He was sitting on the altar of Vishnu and he was calling devotees to come and take blessings. And he would ask each of them what they what they wanted. So when Sridhar came, Lord Chaitanya knew Sridhar was very poor. 
，所以封建者们一个一个的就走到主宰他娘面前。当当轮到虚大的时候，主宰他娘就问他：“请你告诉我，你有什么愿望？”So Kolaveka Sridhar was living in a broken down house with holes in the roof, and he had old cloth, and he didn't have any proper pot to drink water. He was drinking water out of an iron pot. Sridhar 呢，他住在一所呃，就是漏雨的茅屋里。嗯，他的衣服呢也很破旧，他喝水的水罐呢也都是破破的水罐。So Lord Chaitanya asked Sridhar, "What would you like? What can I do for you to help you?" Lord Chaitanya 就问 Sridhar, "Sridhar, 呃，我能为你做什么 ？Do you want wealth? Do you want another wife? Or do you want a kingdom? Just tell me what you want. I can give you." 你要财富吗？你要妻子吗？还是你要国王国吗？我都可以给你。But Sridhar said, "No, I." He said, "Just bless me that I can go on as I'm doing." Shridhar said, "No, Lord, I just hope you will allow me to continue doing what I'm doing." Whatever income I get, I use fifty percent to worship Mother Ganges. Whatever income I get, I use fifty percent to worship Mother Ganges. Whatever income I get, I use fifty percent to worship Mother Ganges. Whatever income I get, I use fifty percent to worship Mother Ganges. Whatever income I get, I use fifty percent to worship Said the bird lives in its nest in the tree, and the king lives in his home in the palace. 鸟儿它们住在自己的鸟巢里，而国王住在他们的嗯宫殿里。So everyone is suffering and enjoying according to their past deeds. 每个人都由于他们过往的活动而受苦或享受。He said, "Why I should want to change anything?" I'm, I'm, I'm happy. I just want to go on as I'm doing. 我我已经很满足了，我我也很快乐，我就想就这样生活下去。So this is an example of the brahmana who is satisfied. He doesn't have any material demands. 这就是一个已经心满意足的婆罗门的典范，他没有物质的要求。So. The brahmanas are very dear to Lord Krishna. One of Krishna's brahmana friends in Vrindavan was someone called Madhu Mangal. So, um, brahman brahmana is Krishna 钟爱的人。在 Vrindavan, Krishna 有一个 brahmana 朋友叫 Madhu Mangal. Madhu Mangal is a very funny brahmana living in Vrindavan and. Lord Krishna, of course, he was playing the part. He was living in the home of Nanda Maharaj, so they were like Vaishyas, so they would have to give respect to the Brahmanas. Madhu Mangal 呢是一个特别滑稽的，嗯，滑稽的 Krishna 的朋友。嗯，而 Krishna 呢，他因为他的父亲是呃木牛郎，所以他们就被认为是 Vaishya 阶层，应该尊重 Brahmana 阶层。And this Madhu Mangal is a Brahmana. He liked to eat. Brahmanas, you know, they're fond of they they like and they they're all the the custom is to feed the brahmana first. So this brahmana Madhu Mangal was quite fat. So, 按照嗯按照文化习俗呢，首人们首先要给 brahmana 食物吃，所以这位 Madhu Mangal 他身材特别的肥胖。So. Lord Krishna used to always give nice sweets and things to Madhu Mangal to keep him happy. So, to make him happy, Madhu Mangal, Krishna would give him many sweets and sweets. And Madhu Mangal would give him many sweets and sweets. And Madhu Mangal would give him many sweets and sweets. And Madhu Mangal would give him many sweets and sweets. And Madhu Mangal would give him many sweets and sweets. And Madhu Mangal would give him many sweets and sweets. And Madhu Mangal would give him many sweets and sweets. And Madhu Mangal would give him many sweets and sweets. And Madhu Mangal would give him many sweets and sweets. And Madhu Mangal would give him many sweets and sweets. And Madhu Mangal would give him many sweets and sweets. He said, are, "How are you, my brahmana? Are you satisfied with your religious duties?" So, when this brahmana came to Krishna's temple, Krishna was very concerned about his situation. He asked him, "My dear brahmana, are you satisfied with your religious duties?" Hmm. And、mm-hmm. Lord Krishna was happy to see the brahmana was 
satisfied with his religious principles. 当主 Krishna 看到 Brahmana 都因为他们各自的宗教职责而满足的时候，他自己也会感到很呃高兴。and then the Brahmana read the letter to Lord Krishna, written by Rukmini, and Lord Krishna was agreed. He agreed that yes, I, I want to accept this girl as my wife. I will come there, and we will try to take her for my wife. This Brahmana to Krishna Rukmini's Krishna that he so Rukmini had also given a plan when she wrote the letter, she had given a plan to Krishna how he could go about getting her, how he could kidnap her and take her for his wife. Rukmini Krishna because the marriage has already been arranged, so uh, the, to, for Lord Krishna to come there and take take her away when she's supposed to marry somebody else, it would be there would be a lot of fighting. There will be a it will be a big battle. 因为这个婚婚事呢已经定了，所以主Krishna去那里呢，注定会引起场大战。so Rukmini didn't think it would be good for Krishna to come into the home where she was living because he would have to fight with so many of her family members. Rukmini had actually five brothers. The oldest one was the one who had arranged the marriage, but the other brothers were also supporting. Rukmini So Rukmini had told Krishna that what you do is you wait till I come out before the marriage. The day before the marriage, I have to go to the Durga temple and I will come out of the house to go to the Durga temple. So at that time, you can kidnap me. So, Rukmini told Krishna, You can wait until the first day of the marriage, because I want to go to Durga temple to the temple of the temple. So, you can wait until the first day of the marriage, and you can wait until the first day of the marriage. So in this way, Lord Krishna came from Dwarka. He came there to the town, to the Videha, the place where Rukmini was living, and where the marriage was to take place. So Krishna came from Dwarka, came to the village of Videha. And then, when Rukmini came out, she came out with all of her family members and relatives. And she went to the Durga temple, and she was worried that why well, don't know is Krishna come? I, I should know news from Krishna. So when Rukmini and her family went to the temple, she went to the Durga temple, and she was worried that why don't know is Krishna come? I, I should know news from Krishna. But she could feel some、uh, quivering on her left side of her body. And that's considered auspicious. He felt his left hand was shaking, shaking. So this is a very good sign. And then just, just after that, the Brahmana who she sent to Dwarka, he appeared and he told Rukmini that Krishna is here. He's come here. At this time, Rukmini sent to Dwarka the Brahmana who she sent to Dwarka. 出现了，他告诉 Rukmini 说，嗯 ，Krishna 已经到了现场。So Krishna was there, but also there were so many other kings who were the enemies of Krishna, Jarasandha, and Salva, and and Tishupala. They were all the envy enemies of Krishna. 那在场的不仅有 Krishna， 还有 Krishna 敌人 Jarasandha, Salva, Tishupala. So. When Rukmini came out from the temple of Durga, then Lord Krishna just simply took her and put her on his chariot and drove off. 
当 r u k m i n i 款款走出 Durga n i s h 的庙的时候，就 Krishna 就上前来把 r u k m i n i 抱上他的战车就走了。Just like a lion will take the the food away from the jackal. 就像一头雄狮，嗯，从豺狼那里叼走一一个是羊。You see the jackals. Sometimes we have a lot of jackals in Mayapur. So in Mayapur, there are many jackals, and you know they're 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 smaller animals. They're not very big, and even the the dogs, the dogs, they'll run after the jackals. 在马雅普有有很多狐狼，狐狼的体型呢不大，甚至连狗的体型都比这狐狼的体型要大。So Lord Krishna. Was like a lion, and he took Rukmini away from the jackals. So Krishna, 就像狮一头狮子，他就把 Rukmini， 呃，带走了，就像从狐狼那里带走。And the Vedic culture is such that if a woman is touched by a no, a man, then she cannot be be the property of another man. 按照伟达文化呢，倘倘若一位女子被另外一位男子触碰之后，她就已经成为他的财产了。As soon as Rukmini was taken by Krishna, then she becomes immediately his property. She is his wife. 一旦 Rukmini 就被 Krishna 触碰之后，她就成为 Krishna 的财产，做了他的妻子了。So it was a great shock to Sishupala because Sishupala was expecting he was going to marry this girl. Sishupala 呢就大吃一惊。因为施舒帕拉本来应该娶茹克米尼。施舒帕拉 was devastated to see this happen that she went off with Krishna on his chariot. 当施舒帕拉看到这一幕之后，他简直就崩溃了。看到茹克米尼在 Krishna 的车上。And Jarasandha, who was there, he tried to console Sishupala. He told him, he said, "Well, you know," he said, "I fought Krishna seventeen times." But finally, the eighteenth time, I defeated him. 嗯，然后扎尔桑达还劝告施舒帕拉说：“你知道吗？我跟奎什纳打了十七仗，最后一仗我打赢了。” He said, "So don't worry." He said, "You've been defeated. You've lost this girl, but in the future, you'll be successful." 嗯，所以你不要担心，你现在失去了这个女孩子，将来你会成功的。In this way, Jara Sandha tried to pacify the mind of Sishu Pala. 所以，嗯，加尔桑达就这样试图安慰他的朋友施舒帕了。And the other kings, they tried to, they tried to go after Krishna, but Lord Balaram came with his army, and Lord Balaram intervened between Lord Krishna and these kings. 其他的国王试图在后面追赶 Krishna， 这时候主巴勒拉玛就率领军队挡住，挡住了他们的去路。But then Rukmini's brother, Rukmi. Her eldest brother, who had arranged the marriage, he was very angry, and he vowed, "I'm going to bring back my sister. I'm not going to let her go off with Krishna. I'm going to kill Krishna, and I'm going to bring back my sister." 你安排这场婚事的 Rukmini 的哥哥哥哥 Rukmi 就勃然大怒，就发誓说，我要杀杀了 Krishna， 把我的妹妹带回来。And so Rukmi. He made this vow. He said, "If I cannot bring back, if I cannot kill Krishna, I'm not going to come back to my own town here." Um, he also vowed that if I cannot kill Krishna, I will not come back to my own town here. So Rukmi went after Krishna, he drove his chariot and killed him. So Rukmi went after Krishna, he drove his chariot after Krishna, and he had an army with him. And he went after Krishna, he drove his chariot after Krishna, and he had an army with him. And he went after Krishna, he drove his chariot after Krishna, and he had an army with him. And he went after Krishna, he drove his And then Rukmi challenged Krishna. So Ruk Rukmi 呢，他就他有自己的军队，他就乘上战车，率领军队在后面紧追不舍，最后追上了 Krishna. And Lord Krishna turned to face the challenge. He came to meet Rukmi. So Krishna 呢，就转过身来，就接受了 Rukmi 的挑战 And they fought with each other for some time. And Lord Krishna defeated Rukmi, broke all of his weapons, and took Rukmi a prisoner. Uh, Lord Krishna, 呢，就这样跟呃 Rukmi 就呃交战了一会儿，就把他的所有手中的武器弓箭都折断了，最后还抓住了他
And Lord Krishna was about to cut the head off Rukmi. He's about to, to kill him. But Rukmini was there and she pleaded with her husband that, Oh, he's my brother. Please don't kill him. Please spare him. The duty of a sister always to be should always be compassionate to her brother. And this Rukmini showed this compassion to her brother, although her brother was such a demon and he was and, and not a devotee at all, but Rukmini was kind to him and pleaded with Krishna to spare him. So Lord Krishna then took his sword and began to cut off some of the beard and hair off of the head of Rukmi. He didn't kill him, but he cut off some of his hair in different places. And this, this was a very humiliating thing. To... So in this way, Rukmi was completely humiliated and defeated. So he couldn't go home. So he stayed there and he just made a new house for himself and lived there. Then Lord Krishna went back to Dwarka with Rukmini and they had their wedding in Dwarka and she became the first wife of Lord Krishna. So Lord Krishna enjoyed uh, the, the company of Rukmini. She is the goddess of fortune. The Lord Krishna himself is none different from the Supreme Personality, Lord Narayan. So Krishna and they lived there in Dwarka. But Lord Krishna doesn't just have one wife, he had many other wives. And we're going to the next pastime tells about how he got the, the daughter of Satrajit for a wife. Satrajit's daughter was someone, a young woman called Satyabama. Satyabama. So Satyabama and Rukmini, they're the two principal wives of Lord Krishna. Satyabama and Rukmini. If you go to Dwarka, you see in the temple of Dwarka, the deity of Krishna is there and the two wives are there, Satyabhama and Rukmini. Mm. So Satyabhama, she's like number two wife after Krishna, after Rukmini. So So not everyone's happy to be number two. And the person who is number two always wants to become number one. So uh, there's some competition between these two queens. And one, ha one time it happened that Narada Muni brought a Parajata flower and gave it to Rukmini. The aroma of this flower, Parajata flower, was very fragrant. It was the most heavenly flower, the, most, the best of all flowers. And it, it was 
very special to give that flower to Rukmini. But that made such a mama a little envious that she didn't have this flower. But Lord Krishna wants to keep his wife happy, and so he told her that she only has one flower. I will get you a whole tree. And so Satyabhama thought, oh, you give me a tree, oh, very good. Yeah. So it happened that one time Lord Krishna went to the heavenly planets and he took Satyabhama there to the heavenly planets with him. They were returning the earrings of Mother Diti, the mother of the demigods. So, one time, Krishna went to the heavenly planets with his mother Diti, the mother of the demigods. So, at that time, Lord Krishna told Satyabhama, you can take one tree. Let's take a Parijata tree with us. We'll take it back to Dwarka. So Krishna told him, we can take a tree to Dwarka. So they, they took one tree. But when they took the tree, Indra, Indra's wife, Sachi, Indra is the king of heaven, his wife, Sachi, but she became angry. She said, they cannot take that tree. These trees only belong in heaven. They cannot take that tree away. So Indra got involved. He had to keep his wife happy. He had to fight with Krishna and told Krishna, you can't take this tree. This tree has to stay here. So there's a great fight between Indra and Krishna, and of course Lord Krishna came out victorious. And Krishna brought the tree down to Dwarka and he planted the tree in Dwarka. And even the, the bees came down from heaven after the aroma of the flower. So I didn't tell you how Krishna got Satyabhama as a wife. But there's a story, it's related to, uh, it's related to the dealing between the father, such a Bama's father, such a Satrajit. So Satrajit was a devotee of the sun god and the sun god had given him a, a jewel and this jewel could produce gold. And that this jewel which he had given him, it, it was so, it, it made Satrajit, it made him effulgent, it made him glow. And when Satrajit came to Dwarka, all the people in Dwarka thought he was the sun god. And they thought the sun god has come to see Lord Krishna. Hmm. And they, they even came to Lord Krishna in his palace and told him, the sun god has come to Dwarka, he, he, want, he must want to see you. But Lord Krishna told him, that's not the sun god. Mm -hmm. And 
但是 Krishna 就告诉他们说，这个不是太阳神，就是他是这个王。嗯、mm, ，He's only Satrajit. He's a devotee of the sun god, and he's just carrying this jewel. So Lord Krishna met with Satrajit, and he told him, he said, you know, you have this jewel. It's producing gold. You should give it to the king. The king at that time, Ugrasena, he said, something valuable you should give it to the king. Let the king keep it. So Krishna told Satrajit King, you now have this jewel, it can produce gold, it can produce gold, it can produce gold, it can produce gold. In the past, it was, it was common, you had something very valuable, you would give it. You give it to the king, give it or to maybe queen or whatever, you give it to them as a present. And in this way, they'll, they'll appreciate you. They'll, oh, very nice, you know. You give, and, and maybe you get some favors back from them. In the past, a person who has a valuable treasure, he will take it to the king or the king. 呃，做礼物，这样呢就能得到皇帝和女王的嘉赏。Just like in England, in England they have the crown of the queen, and in the crown of the queen there's jewels. These jewels were all given from other countries, from India, from different kings in different places. 就像在大英帝国。嗯，女王的她那个王冠上呢，镶嵌了很多贵重的钻石，这些钻石呢，全都是她的殖民地所属殖民地的那些国王献给英国女王的。So Lord Krishna told Satrajit, you know, you'd be better to give this jewel to the king, but Satrajit was very attached. He said, No, no way! It's my jewel. The sun god gave it to me. I'm keeping it. 所以主 Krishna 就劝告 Satrajit 的王说：“你最好还是把这个宝石献给国王。”但是 Satrajit 的王说：“哦，这怎么可能呢？这可是我的呀。”You know, when you have something like that of value, we get very attached to it. 嗯，所以就是你们如果有是这样特别有价值的，就会慢慢的依附它。So it happened that Satrajit kept. Kept the jewel. He didn't give it to Krishna. He didn't give it to the king. He kept it, but his brother took it and went off with it. So Satrajit 呢就嗯自己保存着这个呃宝石，但是结果他的兄弟就拿走了这个宝石。And the brother was wearing it round his neck. When he got attacked by a lion, he was right. He was going through the jungle. He got attacked by a lion and killed by the lion, and the lion took that jewel. Then later on, that lion was killed by a great bear called Jambavan. So Satrajit 王呃弟弟就带着这个宝石就骑着马去了森林，结果呢，他在丛林间呢就被一头狮子攻击，杀呃被咬死了。这头狮子呢，就衔着这个，把这个呃宝石衔走了。结果狮子又被一头熊给杀死了。这头熊的名字叫扎巴扎巴旺。扎巴旺。扎巴旺。He was a bear from the pastimes of Lord Ramachandra in an earlier yuga. 他在上一个年代，在主 Ramachandra 那个年代呢，是主 Ramachandra 的奉献者。If you hear the Ramayana. You can hear Lord Rama how he had an army of monkeys and bears. 如果你们听过嗯主 Rama 的漫游，就知道主 Rama 他有一只由熊和猴子是猩猩呃组成的一个大军。Monkeys like Hanuman, very powerful monkeys. 嗯，像哈姆曼这样的，不是普通的猴子。And so also the bear Jambavan, he was also very powerful. 还有像扎姆、张巴、张巴万、张巴万这样的熊。So Jambavan took the jewel back and he gave it to his little child who was playing, and so that, you know, he didn't worry about it. He just gave it to a little child. 所以张巴万呢？
就也没有特别在意这个宝石，随手就给他的小儿子玩。But Satrajit, when he saw the jewel was missing, then he he said it must have been Krishna. Krishna was jealous. He wanted it. He must have stolen it from me. Satrajit 看宝石不见了，他就断定一定是 Krishna 嫉妒。Uh, so when you have something valuable, then people, you know, you attract thieves. So, if you have something valuable, then people, you know, you attract thieves. So, if you have something valuable, then people, you know, you attract thieves. No, this is not a good idea. Oh, Mara said, "Is, uh, they were in London. At the time, they wanted to use gold, use gold, gold, the, uh, jewelry, and the jewels of the jewels to decorate the image. Then Papa said, 'Um, this is not a good idea.' It will simply attract thieves. Uh, it will draw out the little thieves. And Papa told how in the past, many temples in India. They had a lot of valuable jewels and so on, but all got stolen. Papa De 就跟奉奉建者们讲，说在过去呢，印度呢有很多的庙宇，那神像呢，他们有很多真的金子、真的珠宝的事物，结果全都被偷走了。嗯。So Lord Krishna was accused that he'd stolen the jewel from Satrajit. So Lord Krishna, he knows everything. So he had to go out and prove to the people that he had not stolen it. He had to go out and find the jewel and bring it back. Because Krishna was accused that he had stolen the jewel, so Krishna had to prove that he was honest. So he had to go out and find the jewel. So he, Lord Krishna, went out. He took some people with him, some of the elders from Dwarka, the senior people there. In Dwarka to go with him, and they went out and they found the dead body of the brother of Satrajit, and then they found the dead lion, and then they came to the cave where Jambaban was living. Krishna 就带着多尔卡城的一些长老就去了丛林，就在丛林中发现了 Satrajit 王的弟弟的尸体，发现了那个狮子的尸体，最后他们就一路来到了。So Lord Krishna told the people who were with him. They said, "You wait here. I will go into the cave and find out if the jewel is here." So Krishna 就告诉这些长老说，你们等在洞口，我我一个人就下到洞里去找。So the people waited outside. Krishna went inside, and he saw a little child playing. With some toys, and he saw that the jewel was also there with the little child. So Lord Krishna immediately wanted to take the jewel. When Lord Krishna 呢来到洞里的时候呢，他就发现张八万的小儿子嗯在玩玩那个玩具，当然那个宝石也在旁边，所以 Krishna 立刻就想拿这个宝石。But the maid who was taking care of the little child, the maid screamed. When she saw someone come into the cave, it was so unexpected that she screamed, and her scream alerted Jambavan, who came, and he came to see what the trouble was. 旁边照顾这个孩子的女仆呢，看到陌生人突然闯进来，不禁就尖叫起来。那他这个尖叫声呢，立刻就就惊醒了这个，引起了张八万的这个警警觉。So Jambavan came running, and he he saw the he saw Krishna. He didn't know who he was, so he fought with him. They had a great fight, and they fought for twenty eight days. Jambavan 就匆匆的跑过来，他也认不认识 Krishna， 然后他就觉得他是闯入者，就跟他就开始开战，就打了八十二十八天。They didn't stop. The whole night, the day and night, non-stop for twenty-eight days. They 晚上也不也不休战
就像这样连着白天黑夜的连着打了二十八天。You know, if you box, if you go in boxing in the ring, they fight for three minutes and then they stop and then have a break and then go back in three more minutes fight. 嗯，如果你们呃去观看拳击赛，就知道拳击赛打三分钟，然后就停，然后再打三分钟，就这样打打停停的。But Krishna fought with Jambavan twenty eight days nonstop. 但是主 Krishna 和张八万呢，他们是一刻不停的打了二十八天。The people who were outside, they waited for twelve days. After twelve days, they thought something must have happened to Krishna. It's so long. They went back to Dwarka and they told the people in Dwarka, something has happened to Lord Krishna. We don't know what's happened. We don't know where he's gone. We don't know what's happened. 在外面的人呢，等了十二天，苦苦等了十二天，也没见 Krishna 回来。最后他们就，嗯，就断定 Krishna 是一定发生了什么事情。他们就很失望的回到杜尔卡城，告诉那里的居民说：“我们不知道，嗯 ，Krishna 发到底发生了什么事情。” So after they've been fighting for twenty-eight days, Jambavan got the realization that the person he is fighting. Is the same person that is not different from Lord Ramachandra. 嗯，过了二十八天之后呢，张八万呢就终终于呃嗯悟到了，和他打仗的这个人呢不是别人，正是他以前的主人 Ramachandra. So, but Jam Bhavan previously he had fought for Lord Ramachandra, and now he's seeing that Lord Ramachandra had come again in the form of Lord Krishna. So he worshipped Lord Krishna. 以前张八万呢，他是嗯为主 Ramachandra 作战。那么这一次呢，他看到 Ramachandra 又以 Krishna 这个形象再次前来，所以他就开始崇拜 Krishna. And then he asked Lord Krishna what how he could serve him, and Lord Krishna said that I've come here to get this jewel. I have to take it back to Dwarka. 张八万就问，呃，我能怎么服务你？ So Krishna 就给他讲，他是来取这个宝石的，然后他要把这个宝石带回多尔卡城。So Jambavan immediately gave the jewel to Lord Krishna, and he thought, Lord, it's such it's such mercy that the Lord has come here to my home. I should give him something more. So he thought, let me offer my daughter to him. Jambavan 立刻就把宝石交给 Krishna， 之后他又想。我应该给嗯嗯把更多的礼物给 Krishna， 于是他便把他的女儿也献给 Krishna。嗯、hmm. ，He had a daughter, Jambavati, so he gave his daughter to Lord Krishna to take for his wife。嗯，所以他就心想，我应该给 Krishna 更多的礼物。他因为他有一个女儿，所以呢，他就把他的女儿 Jambavati 献给 Krishna 做礼物。So this way, Lord Krishna brought the jewel back to Dwarka, along with the new wife, and then he gave the jewel. He called Satrajit to come and said, "Look," he said, "I never took your jewel," and he told him the story what had happened to it, and he gave him. He said, "Here's your jewel. Take it now." Um, Guru Krishna 就这样带着他的新的新新婚的妻子回到杜尔卡城，还带了。宝石回一同回去，他把萨舍支的王叫来，就说：“你看，并不是我拿走了这个宝石，现现在你可以把它拿走了。” So Satra Jit was embarrassed. To, he, he thought, "No, no, you can keep the jewel." But Krishna said, "No, I don't want it. You, you keep it." 呃，萨舍支的呢就感到非常的不好意思，难为情。他说：“哦，不不不，你自己留着吧。” Krishna 说：“不不不，还是你拿走吧。” So Satrajit had this daughter Satyabama, and many many kings and princesses wanted her. They they thought she would make a very nice wife, and there'd been many attempts to get her in marriage, but no one had been successful. Satrajit 呢有个女儿叫 Satyabama， 许多王子呢就很想娶她为妻，就觉得她很适合当他们妻子，但是他们都没有成功的娶到她。So Satrajit decided he would offer his daughter to Lord Krishna. So Satrajit 呢就决定把他女儿献给 Krishna. So this was how he got the third wife, Satyabama. 
。所以主 Krishna 就这样迎娶了他的第三位皇后 Satyabama。And Satyabama becomes one of the very principal queens of Lord Krishna. Satyabama 呢，也是主 Krishna 的首席皇后之一。But this whole story of the shank, the jewel, and the valuable jewel which is producing gold. It simply brought trouble to so many people. 就这颗宝石能够产黄金的宝石，它给许多人带来了麻烦。After Lord Krishna gave it to Satrajit, then some other people wanted to steal it from him, and they came in the night and they killed Satrajit. 就 Krishna 把这宝石归还了 Satrajit 之后呢，又有一一些人。又又有一些人垂涎宝石，然后他们就嗯就找了一个人，深更半夜的来潜入 Satrajit 王的房子杀了他。So the daughter of Satrajit, Satyabama, was heartbroken that her father had been murdered. 所以 Satrajit 的女儿 Satyabama 听说父亲被谋杀了，非伤心欲绝。So she appealed to her husband. She had, she she went to Lord Krishna and she they killed my father. So Lord Krishna also lamented because Satrajit's his father-in-law, Lord Krishna is playing the part of an ordinary person. Um, Satra, um, Satyabama 呢就告诉自己的丈夫说，自己的父亲被人谋杀了。一主 Krishna 呢，他就像一个普通人一样，也为自己的岳父的死而感到难过。And、Lord Krishna came back, and he had to hunt for the person who had killed Satrajit and taken the jewel, and he had to kill that person and bring back the jewel. To Krishna, 就必须得赶回来，赶回来去寻找这个杀人凶手。最后就缉，呃，缉拿了这个凶手，就杀了他。So we see so much trouble coming because of opulence, because of gold, because of material wealth. It brings so many difficulties. So we see that there is wealth, gold, and material wealth that brings so many difficulties. We have to know how to use these things carefully. We must know how to use these things carefully. We must know how to use these things carefully. We must know how to use these things carefully. We must know how to use these things carefully. So we try to make sure that we do like that. When Krishna does give some wealth, we want to use it for His service. So, if Lord Krishna gives us what kind of wealth, we should use it for Krishna. And that is the proper use of all wealth. Um, this is the proper use of all wealth. So, this is the lesson from this pastime. So, this is the lesson from this pastime. 这就是从这些这个小时光当中可以学习到的教训。Are there any questions? 嗯，也有有没有什么问题？ So these pastimes of Lord Krishna are all、uh, narrated to us in the Srimad Bhagavatam by Sukadeva Goswami, who is talking to Maharaj Parikshit. These, uh, to Krishna, 小时光是在圣典博伽瓦谈当中由 Sukadev Goswami 讲述给 Parikshit 王的 Maharaj Parikshit is the grandson of Arjuna. Maharaj Parikshit is Arjuna's son, and he is preparing for his death. He is being cursed to die. He has only seven days to live. And Parikshit King, he is under the curse, he is to die in seven days. So when he got news of the curse, he immediately took the opportunity to detach himself from everything material. When he heard the news of the curse, he immediately took the He, he was the emperor with a huge kingdom, very powerful, and he was not old. He was also in the prime of life. He 拥有
有一个庞大的帝国，有一个很很，呃，非常富有，而且呢，他还是年轻鼎盛的。But when he got news of his curse, he accepted it and he prepared for his death. 但是当他听说自己被诅咒的消息，他就接受了，而且为这死亡做准备。He prepared by finding out a person. Who could instruct him and guide him to prepare for that? He to find a person who could guide him, um, let him prepare for the future. So it, it was arranged that the son of Vyasadeva, namely Shukadeva Goswami, appeared there, and he was considered. He was immediately accepted as being the most qualified person to guide Parikshit. In his preparation for his departure from the world, Vyasadeva's son Shukadev Goswami came to the scene. All the people agreed that he was the most suitable person to guide the king to prepare for his departure. Shukadev Goswami had heard from his own father, Sri Vyasadeva. The essence of all the Vedas, so he was, and he was totally detached from everything material. Shukadev Goswami, from his father, Vyasadeva, there, uh, learned the Vedas' wisdom, and he was totally detached from everything material. And he was also a devotee of the Supreme Lord Shri Krishna. And he was also a devotee of the Supreme Lord Shri Krishna. And he was also a devotee of the Supreme Lord Shri Krishna. And he was also a devotee of the Supreme Lord Shri Krishna. And he was also a devotee of the Supreme Lord Shri Krishna. And he was also a devotee of the Supreme Lord Shri Krishna. And he was also a devotee of the Supreme Lord Shri Krishna. And he was also a devotee of the Supreme Lord Shri Krishna. Coming in a royal family, he had a different upbringing from Shukadeva Goswami. Because Parikshit 呢是诞生在皇族，所以他跟 Shukadeva Goswami 的成长经历不一样。Shukadeva Goswami is coming from a a a a, a, a Brahmanical family, and they were very austere and renounced. Shukadeva Goswami 呢是出自 Brahmana 家庭。But Arjuna Maharaj Parikshit is the grandson of Arjuna. He's coming in a Shatriya family. And Parikshit Maharaj, um, he is from Arjuna's son. He is from the Shatriya family. And he is surrounded by opulence, a lot of wealth. And he is, he is being surrounded by wealth. So there was not much in common. The two of them had never met before. So they two people, two together, had no common point. They had never met before. But by the arrangement of But by the arrangement of providence, with the cursing, the of the with the coming death of Parikshit, it was arranged that he would meet with Sukadeva Goswami. But due to the arrangement of providence, due to So Sukadeva Goswami appeared in his face. And Sukadeva Goswami was there to be questioned by Maharaj Parikshit. And Parikshit Maharaj was like asking Sukadeva Goswami to ask questions. It is customary that when the 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 when two people meet, one is the spiritual teacher, the other is the student. The student will want to inquire. They will want to ask questions. In habit, when the teacher and the student meet, the student will want to ask questions. So Maharaj Parikshit questioned Sukadeva Goswami. 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 So Maharaj Parikshit
the Supreme Personality of God. So in this way, Sukadeva Goswami went on to speak the Srimad Bhagavatam and to describe all the pastimes. Ultimately, he came to the tenth canto and spoke the pastimes of Lord Krishna. Sukadeva Goswami 这样就开始讲述主 Krishna 所有的消时光，一直到第十一篇主 Krishna 的消时光。And this way, Sukadeva Goswami was describing also how Krishna married different queens; they became his wives. Sukadeva Goswami, 嗯，也描述了 Krishna 是这样呃如何就娶了不同的公主做自己的妻子。So we're recounting some of these pastimes here today. 所以我们今天在这里就讲述的是其中一些消时光。Okay, Hare Krishna. So we'll have prasadam in a little while. Yeah. 过一会儿是不杀的。No, no questions. So you can, yeah, yeah. Now that is for pastimes, to give pleasure to their husband. Rukmini and Satya Bama are both great devotees. The question is, why do they still have pleasure? Ananda says, because they are doing it for Krishna's disappearance, it is for their husband's pleasure to give pleasure. Lord Krishna enjoys the dealings between these different ladies, his wives. He enjoys keeping them happy. Lord Krishna, um, 享受他和这些嗯女士之间的交往，他也他希望这他们都很开心。It's all. Pastimes, pastime potency arranges these things. 主的逍遥时光的能量就安排，嗯，安排了这些细节。So Lord Krishna is performing these pastimes. He's behaving, coming to this world, behaving in, like an ordinary person, but at the same time. They're very different from any ordinary person. Chu Krishna, 呢降临尘世呢，他上演了就好像普通人一样的逍遥时光，但是却有跟普通人的逍遥时光是有很大的区别。No ordinary person can have sixteen thousand one hundred and eight wives. 没有哪个普通人能娶嗯一万一万六千一百零八位妻子。But Krishna can do it. Krishna can. And he can be with each of them simultaneously and keep them all happy. He can be with each of them simultaneously and keep them all happy. He can be with each of them simultaneously and keep them all happy. He can be with each of them simultaneously and keep them all happy. Shri Prabhupada Ki Jai